Hello YouTubers, Alaska Prepper here. So before we start this video, I wanted to tell you ahead of time that at 4.30 p.m. Alaska time or 8.30 p.m. Eastern time, I'm going to be doing a live stream with Magic Prepper over on Magic Prepper's channel. So if you guys want to join in and do a little chatting online during live, by all means, go ahead to Magic Prepper's channel, join in, and we'll have a little bit of fun. Hope to see you there. Hello YouTubers, Alaska Prepper here. So today I'm going to take you guys along on a ride so that we can fill our water tank. But first we have to transfer this water tank over to our new vehicle or our old new vehicle. And I want to show you some upgrades that I made to my water tank. So stand by. This is not that heavy of a tank, but it's just awkward. So what I do to be able to carry it by myself is there's a handle right here. So I'll take the lid off, or the manhole cover, I guess they call this. It's more like a baby hole cover. <laughs> we'll take this off. And I'll be able to hold it from here and from here. And then just balance the weight on my body as I lift it up. Before we put the tank on the bed of the truck, I have to get these pieces of wood out of here. Because that's what I use to give the tank a tilt. In the back, there's two pieces of wood stacked up on top of each other. And in the front, there's only one piece of wood. That gives the tank enough of a tilt that most of the water drains out when I'm emptying it into my tank. So last year, around the middle of winter last year, I started getting a small leak around this area and I was able to get through it by putting some silicone on it and it, it made it through the winter but it still had like a drop maybe every three or four seconds. So I took this tank in so that they can replace this portion of it right here excluding the ball, ball valve. They can upgrade, upgrade this portion in here so they found what the problem was. They found that during the winter it had gotten frozen and I did something bad so let me show you this is what it looks like in there so when they put it in there they put it from the inside and then they screw that big nut around it all right so this is what it looks like coming from the inside and the inside it looks like this so this part is almost towards the bottom of the tank that way it can siphon out all the water or almost all of the water when it's done well what happened last year or last winter is that when this part froze, I went in through the outside with a long screwdriver, tried to knock out the ice, and look at what I did. And when I did that, I must have knocked this off of the threads, and it created a leak. So this is pretty easy to happen if you do something senseless like I did, trying to knock the ice out with a screwdriver, especially when you don't know what the inside looks like. So they went ahead and replaced that, and now... It drains out almost all the water. I would say there's probably less than a gallon of water left in that tank when it drains out. Whereas before, with this hole in it, it wasn't creating the suction power that it needed to siphon it out. So it would leave probably like 20 gallons in the tank. So I'm really glad I took it in. These guys did a great job. I had to drop my tank off and then pick it up the next day, but they did a great job. The second upgrade is this inlet that I put in here or that I had them put in here. And it's great. Now, when we get to the water hole, I'm going to show you the three different ways that I can put water in this tank now instead of really one. Because when I had it in my truck, I could only really use one way. But I'm going to show you all the ways that I can put it in the tank. Put water in the tank. It makes my life so much easier. These are only 500 pound straps. So the reason you see me doubling up on them is because I want to have at least 2,000 pounds of stopping power I guess you could say with these straps so that's why I'm doubling up on these although ladies and gentlemen to tell you the truth if someone with a tank of water in the back of their truck you know that's close to 2,000 pounds if it rolls over that tank's gonna come off I mean it's got to be pretty much welded on there I think this water is so dense and heavy that I don't see how it would come off but it does keep the tank from shifting around during transport. So these are now, now nice and tight. 
do the last one. Now I'm just going to cut some strips of uh, electrical tape so I can secure those overhanging straps. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Everything is secure. Everything is strapped up. So now, ladies and gentlemen, what do you say we take a ride and go uh, get some morning coffee at my favorite gas station and then go fill up with water? I actually may have to make a couple of trips today because I neglected my water tank for the last couple of days because I was cleaning out the back of the truck and I was having this tank serviced. So we'll see you when we get to the water shack. We are here ladies and gentlemen, so I wanted to go ahead and show you real quick something that I forgot to mention. So for those of you that remember me saying on my last video that this truck is equipped with airbags, on this load I did not inflate the airbags any, they're only at 5 PSI because I wanted to see just how much the truck bed would go down with this load of water and then it will give me a guesstimation I guess to see how much pressure I need to put in the airbag. So I didn't bring a tape measure, so I'm just gonna measure from the tire tread to the top there. And as you can see, it's right at that rib right there. So once we fill it up, we'll take a look at it and see exactly how far down this truck bed will go after I put water in it. Now, there's three ways that I can fill this tank up. I can fill it up through this valve right here by using a male fitting that comes right from the pump or there's other fittings at different pumps that will fit right through this manhole or through this inlet hole. I can fill it up through there so if for some reason I come over here and this pump is being used I can always move to another one that's open and fill it up through here or I can fill it up through the manhole up there which is the one that I like the least because it makes me have to get up on the truck and during the winter that can actually be a little bit dangerous with all the ice and stuff so here I have two very good viable options. That means that when I come here and someone's on this pump where I need to use this fitting, if someone's here, I don't have to wait. I can just go to a different pump that has a fitting that'll fit in there, which there's two other ones here, so I don't have to sit and wait. There's been times where I've had to wait for like 15 minutes just to get to this pump. So let me go ahead and show you how this goes in. This is just a male to female fitting, one and a half. And it just goes right in there and if you hear that that's just because somebody else is filling up their their tank all we do is close this up make sure that this is open right there then we go put our money in and open the valve and the water will go in all right now we come in here and we put in our money and what I'm doing today ladies and gentlemen I usually only put five dollars in but I'm gonna go ahead and try to Put as much water, you too sir, put as much water as this tank will hold to see if this fitting up here will not leak. So let's go ahead and start it up and you'll hear the water rushing in when we start it up. Some people may ask, what do you do in the winter to keep that ball valve from freezing? Well, in the winter time, every time I get water, I take that ball valve off, I put it in this bag, and I bring it in the house so it won't freeze. A couple of other things that I carry with me when I come get water, and I did this off camera so you didn't see it, is some Clorox wipes so that I can clean off the tip on the uh, female and the male end. And I always bring a little hammer with me, especially for the winter, because sometimes the ice builds up pretty thick around my bumper and or around the uh, water station and I go ahead and, and knock it off with that little hammer. And look at that, that filled it right up to the top. I mean all the way up to the top and no leaks, success. I never used to fill this tank up to the top when it was in my Suburban. I only filled it up to around here 
because being inside my Suburban, every time that you, you know, take a turn or hit a bump or something, a little bit of water comes out of that manhole up there. And over time, it would ice up under the carpet and stuff. So that's one of the reasons why I wanted to get this vehicle is so that I can fill it up to the top, take advantage of all of the room inside that tank, and so that it wouldn't ruin the inside of my Suburban. So let's go ahead and check and see how much this brought our bed down. Well, as you can see, it brought our bed down about three quarters of an inch. No, let's say about one inch. So it was hitting up here. Now it's down here, right below this red mark. And what I'll do is, is next time that I come to get water, I'm going to go ahead and pump up those airbags to 15 pounds, and we'll see if it makes a difference. Now all we have to do is make sure that we close this, and common courtesy is to make sure that this valve is closed before you put it back. Because if you come to get water and you don't check to make sure that this valve is closed and it's open, as soon as you put your money in, this is going to start throwing out water at a very fast rate. I've seen it happen before. It's never happened to me because I always check it. But I've seen it happen before in the middle of winter and the guy got drenched. So the last upgrade that I made to my water hauling system is to get a flexible hose with a female and a male attachment. That way, in the past, ladies and gentlemen, I used to have to pull in like within a half an inch tolerance, if not less, so that my pipe over here would have to line up exactly with my outlet or my ball valve. Now with this flexible hose, all I have to do is just connect it and it should flex enough to where I can uh, connect these two together without that much trouble. And as you can see, that was easy peasy. In the wintertime, it's gonna be such a nice thing to have because in the wintertime with the snow, it's even more difficult to line this up exactly where you need it. And I'd gotten pretty good at it with the Suburban, uh, but with this, all I have to do is just back it up to this spot. And even if I'm off by six inches or even a foot, this hose right here allows me to connect the water to the house pipe with no problem. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to be it for today. I, I hope you guys got something out of this. I hope that you got, got to see how it is that I hold my water. I've done videos like this before of hauling my water, but I wanted to show the upgrades that I did to my water hauling system. That way, in case anyone that's watching, maybe from Alaska or from a place where they have to haul their own water and some of the conditions that we have to here in Alaska, maybe get some ideas out of it. All right, having said that, I hope you guys have a great day today. Remember to be good to each other. When good people do good things, good things happen. Remember to reach one, teach one, and repeat. If we all did this, the world would be a better place, and you know that it will be a better place. Many blessings to all of you and your families. This is Alaska Prepper. I'm out.